Hey guys, so uh, today we're going to work on drawing a dog nose. Uh, Mr. Oaks asked to kind of work on, you know, how to draw that. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you uh, how to get started, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because it's one of the easier parts of it. Uh, mostly going to be paying attention to how to how to really identify values and textured uh, textured parts of this uh, because that's that's where you can really start to make everything pop. Um, it's going to look a little awkward because uh, we're just drawing the nose. So when we actually get done, it's going to start looking like a kind of a creepy face. But I'm going to show you how to add a little bit to to show that hey, this is a this is a nose. This is not a, a skull face or something like that. So, um, but if you see up here, up here on the image, um, I've got kind of an area identified for a basic shape to get us started. So what we're going to do is I've got my pencil ready. And I'm going to start trying to get that shape going. Uh, so I like to, I usually like to start from top down. So I'm going to start with that little smiley face. And I'm, I'm going pretty light on this. Okay. And you're just trying to get the shape. So this is not something you have to spend a whole lot of time on. This is mostly just getting things going. So that way you can move into f making a final drawing. So, and if you need to identify maybe like a like a shape that's closer to, I would say like a in between a square and a triangle because it's kind of upside down an upside down triangle with a squarish base. So I'm gonna go down like this, and then I'm gonna start curving in. Well, not curving. I'm just gonna start angling the shape a little bit. Remember, you're drawing really lightly, so that way. You can erase the lines easily enough when you are ready for that. Kind of come down like this. And there I have my basic shape. So it's, super, it's really light. Um, I don't press down very hard on it. And then I just, just for my own purposes, I try to identify kind of the middle parts of it. I'm going to start, if I look at the photo, it's just slightly above that line. And so what one thing you also need to do is you need to identify the space between the nostrils. And so you could measure it out if you want to, but not necessary. You can eyeball it. So actually I would recommend really teaching yourself how to how to eyeball these kind of things. You know, and they don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to necessarily be symmetrical. You know, some people have nostrils that are pretty symmetrical, but most people and most animals, their nostrils are not the same size. In fact, sometimes they're not even placed in the same kind of area. So I wouldn't even worry about making it perfect. Okay, so I have my basic idea about where the nostrils are going to be. So now um, you want to start to shape the nose. So I have it pretty like just like that. Um, where I just have like pretty straight lines. Now when I now when I say shape the nose, now you want to start it to give it kind of a like a, a more realistic quality. You know what's what does a dog nose actually look like? Well, it comes in shape like in curves and waves. So for example, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start rounding things off, coming in. So if we look at what the nose, let me actually. Get rid of those red lines for you. Oops, wrong one. Let's go here. So you can see, you can actually start to see some curvature in the nose, like how it how it works. So it's a, there's a pretty smooth look to it. So I'm smoothing those things out. I'm rounding things out a lot here. Okay. And I'm actually going to go ahead and start like maybe adding some like hair-like quality to it because we can start to see that that's what's going on. So do the same thing over here. Again, I don't think you have to necessarily make this symmetrical. This is, like I said before, there are hardly anything, there's hardly anything on the human face, the animal face, on the human body that is perfectly symmetrical. So trying to get things 
perfect like that, I don't think is, is necessary. Okay, so now I'll start getting the nostril going. Start getting it in, just like that. that. Cool. Okay, and I'm actually gonna, let's see, so we have a nose. It's kind of coming down like this. So I'm pretty partial to rounding things out. There's a lot of people who like to have sharp points on some things. I'm very much about um, Make it giving things a much more round like quality because I think that's adds more personality to um, people and animals. So, and then we've got this coming down like here. It's going to add just maybe a, a little bit there. Okay, so I've got it done. Um, and as I'm looking at the nose and then looking at what I've done, there's there's a lot of differences because I, I kind of run on autopilot. To, I kind of just like to go with things how they feel naturally. Um, so if that's the way you do things, then, then great, do that. But the most important part about this is identifying the different values. So what I like to do is, I'm going to pull this up. If we look at the nose, I like to think of values in lines and how those lines um, relate to the different values. So in this case, in this case, uh, how it relates to the shadows and the shading uh, and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is pull this up, get my pencil out, and I'm actually going to kind of look at where it starts to get, where the light starts to hit the dark. So for me, I draw a really light line kind of where I think it should go. We have kind of some light around the nostril here. Like that. And it starts to get dark. Almost like right there. And then there's a line down here. And then it's pretty much dark going all the way down. So this point, what I like, what I like to do is I like, um, I like to cross hatch for my shading, for a lot of it. So that's what I'm going to do here. And what I like to do is just go ahead and just get those lines in there. Cross hatching is one of my favorite um, kind of shading techniques. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into. The amount of detail I normally do. Um, I'm just going to do enough just so you guys get the basic idea here. So those lines I did, this is where I'm just doing some cross-hatching and I'm just doing some basic cross-hatching here. So now I'm going on the intersecting lines and this is where I start to get the shading going. So I start out just like this and this is the tedious part. So this cross hatching is very, uh, you have to be patient with it. Just like with stippling, you gotta be patient with stippling. So, all right. Okay, so I've got some cross hatching going in there. And now I wanna start to really get the, the values going. So I look at where it's darkest and where it's lightest. So I'm gonna start. You know, if you have a 2B pencil, go ahead and get a, a 2B or a 4B, and this will allow you to get some darker uh, darker lines in there. Okay, I'm going to get some of these guys going. Get in there. I'm going to start kind of going back through. And start making this bottom part a little darker, just like so. Now come up here a little bit, just add a little bit of darker tones. And 
create some kind of above this nostril, just like that. And maybe just add just a couple more lines in there, just a, a quality to it. Okay, and we, we do know that there is a line going down the middle of his nose here. So we'll do that. Just like that. Can add some lighter lines, just kind of tapering, tapering it off a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just something to show that it's blending into the light. Okay. And at this point, I'm gonna actually grab a larger lead. You can start to start to shade in the inside of the nose. And um, this is the part where it's a little difficult for me because trying to figure out how to make this work well inside the nostril. But yeah, you just shade in that nostril inside there. Usually on a tablet, I would just hit the fill the fill uh, function uh, just to automatically fill inside the nostril. But I'm trying to do this in the way that you guys would pro probably be doing it at home. But just like that. Just gonna color that in pencil. So again, like I said in the video, uh, looks like a kind of a creepy. Uh, skull thing, but um, you get the idea that it's a note. If you need to, you can start to create the snout. Um, just just so, you know, it's if if it's creeping you out a little bit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll just something around there just to get that. You can even start to create the fur that's around the nose uh, with strokes of hair. That's another thing I'm going to be working on. I'm a I do remember before we uh, went to spring break, there were I heard some kids they want to learn how to do hair, so I might I might actually do a video on how to um, draw hair and different kinds of hair. So if that's something you're interested in, that will be a video I will be making for you guys. Okay, so got got the snout going, so you can start to see that this is part of a nose. There's still some awkwardness to it, but yeah, that's the way it is. Um, at this point, you at this point, if you want to stop, you can, but if you want to add some more details, you can look at the nose, and the nose has like a textured look to it. And, you know, it, the textured part is pretty small, so what you can do is you can actually just kind of, if you look down at the bottom of the nose, I'm actually doing stuff like this. I'm just, I'm kind of just making almost little tiny smiley faces. Now, if you decide to do this, what I would recommend is still paying attention to those values. You know, it's darker at the more of the bottom towards the nose, and as you get up, it starts to get lighter. So, you want to have more of these kind of smiley faces when you're down at the bottom, and as you work yourself up, you start to decrease on the amount. Or, or maybe not do gears, but like spread the smiley faces out. So just like that. And it's okay if these little smiley faces overlap. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it for this. I'm going to finish this drawing up, and so that way you guys have a finished image to reference and look at. And um, I'll send it to Mr. Oaks. Um, but this way, this way you have a reference. Um, but just as a final thought, what you want to want to do is you want to get that shape, and you want to form uh, form the shape into what looks like a nose, and then start to pay attention to those values. However, you want to achieve those values. If you want to use a blending stump, use use that. If you want to do the cross hatching, if you want to do stippling, whatever works for you, whatever works best. Um, you can follow exactly what I'm doing with the cross hatching, but remember that you want to pay attention to how the values work um, with, with uh, whatever reference you're using.